When I was a kid, I played stickball, I played softball, I played hardball, but I never had a moment of athletic glory. I had to wait to the summer of my 28th year for that. That was the summer that a whole bunch of guys got together every Thursday at noon at the Cleveland Circle uh, fields, all these unemployed and underemployed guys, and we played great games of softball every Thursday. It was a glorious summer. I don't think it rained any Thursday. It was sunny and hot and sweaty every week. I was pretty good. I, I, I was always adequate. And I, I think I hit a little better that summer. But there was one player on the team, Jim, who was the apple of everyone's eye. He was a real athlete. He was so graceful and easy. He played an amazing center field, almost acrobatic. A terrific hitter, a beautiful swing, sort of like J.D. Drew with more emotion. And he hit doubles and home runs almost every time he was at bat. He, he actually was kind of a professional athlete. He was the national frisbee throw champion. Every year, the Whammo Frisbee Company would jet him to Los Angeles, put him up in a great hotel, buy him a terrific dinner, and the next day send him off to a field, put a frisbee in his hand, and he would throw a frisbee a couple of times, re-break his world record for longest frisbee throw in world history, get in the Guinness Book of Records, they gave him a trophy, and they went home to Boston. He was a really lovely guy. Um, he was also the part-time weather caster for WCAS AM in Cambridge which was this terrific little folk rock station I really wanted to be a DJ on, but never had the guts to ask for a job. He uh, couldn't do his normal weather forecasting research on game day. So what he would do is he would race to a phone booth along the third base line. He would call up the National Weather Bureau, get their forecast in 30 seconds, immediately call up WCAS and say, hey, it's Jim, uh, I only have two minutes, can I get plugged in right now? And they said, sure, we'll plug the reel-to-reel -reel tape machine into the phone and go. And he would give this terrific ad-lib thing about a minute and a half long with his 30 seconds of information, and they loved it. They said, oh, we appreciate this so much. He had the time to get his glove and get out to center field for the beginning of the next inning. <laughs> It was so graceful, it was so easy. He was such a natural. He was, I guess, the closest I ever came to uh, having a man crush, come to think of it. So there was one game, I was just on fire. I was not only hitting adequately, I was hitting every ball that came my way. Every time I swung, I got a hit. I didn't even hit any foul balls or, or missed swings. It was remarkable. They all went to right field because I was always a late swinger. Sort of singles and doubles down the line, mostly line drives. By the ninth inning, we were behind 24 to 23. I was up every inning, was that kind of game. I got up and they put on a Ted Williams shift on me. Little Danny Gewurz, they put on this shift on me like I was a slugger, except it was an opposite field shift. So, three infielders on the right side, two outfielders in short right field, because they knew I didn't have any power, and I got nervous, what should I do? I mean, is there a way to break the shift? And I thought, well, one way to do it is to change your stance completely. So. I put my foot out to the third base line. I looked really peculiar. It was incredibly awkward. And I thought, well, there's one bad point of this. They'll know what I'm doing. I mean, it looks ridiculous. But they didn't get it. They didn't notice. Nobody changed position. The pitcher pitched. And I hit this screaming line drive right where the shortstop used to be. It was a single. The men on second and third came home. We won the game. I was a hero at last. It has been my only heroic moment on a sports field. I was 28 years old, and it, it felt amazing. They said, you hit to right, you hit to left, you're a, left, you're a champion. You're as good as Jim. It was, it was really an amazing moment. Now, I did not play much softball after that. And in fact, I didn't even much think of Jim. But three years later, I had my big interview with WCAS to become a disc jockey. I was sitting in the waiting room, and I was nervous. I was a nervous wreck. And then I thought, wait a minute. This is the radio station. 
that Jim used to fool on a regular basis, <laughs> that he made idiots of. His con worked beautifully. They are not that smart. They are not that competitive. I can do this. And all of a sudden, I became easy and graceful and calm, just like Jim was. I aced the interview and got the job. And right now, 30 years later, oftentimes when I have trouble sleeping late at night or in the middle of the night, just to kind of get myself into a better mood, I imagine me at the plate hitting these line drives to right field. I mean, in my imagination, it is Fenway Park. <laughs> but the emotional memory goes back to Cleveland Circle and those wonderful games of softball in the summer.